What up, Dyslexia Nation? Today I want to talk to you guys about brain computer interfaces and this company Elon Musk started called Neuralink. Tesla CEO Elon Musk is the subject of a new controversy. What is it about you that seems to invite skepticism? Do people get upset at you if you do certain things? Two, two one. Whoa. This stuff is of, of sci-fi novels and movies, and it's so far away, but yeah. every time I hear you speak, it's like, well, no, this stuff is sitting, it's, it's right here. I'm interested in things that, that change the world or, or that affect the future in wondrous new technology, where you see it and you're like, wow, how, how did that even happen? How, how's that possible? Now, I've been following this story for about a year and a half, and uh, it's really interesting. So, a uh, computer brain interface is a device or a computer chip that gets directly implanted into your uh, into your brain and that chip has the ability to wirelessly communicate with other network devices. Ultimately, we can do a full uh, brain machine interface. Yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Some of the implications of that technology would be like people being able to directly control what's happening on screens, directly control like robots, directly control electronic devices without physically interacting with it. Just by using your thoughts, you'd be able to communicate with these devices. And we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. And this is extremely important. Composed of nearly 100 billion cells called neurons. Neurons come in many complex shapes, but generally they have a dendritic arbor, a cell body called a soma, and an axon. The neurons of your brain connect to form a large network through axon dendrite junctions called synapses. At these connection points, neurons communicate with each other using chemical signals called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are released from the end of an axon in response to an electrical spike called an action potential. When a cell receives enough of the right kind of neurotransmitter input, a chain reaction is triggered that causes an action potential to fire and the neuron to in turn relay messages to its own downstream synapses. Action potentials produce an electric field that spreads from the neuron and can be detected by placing electrodes nearby, allowing recording of the information represented by a neuron. Another cool implication for brain-computer interfaces, the educational or like accessibility that these things would have for people who have untypical brains. So like people with like dyslexia, people with ADHD, Asperger's, um, and other processing disorders, this chip should be able to help uh, people like us to do things more efficiently. Uh, our goal is to record from and stimulate um, spikes in neurons and, and do so in a way that is uh, orders of magnitude um, more than anything that's been done to date and uh, safe and um, good enough that you can, it's, it's not like a major operation it's, it's sort of equivalent to, to sort of a LASIK type of thing. So our brain has two parts, and the first part is called the hindbrain. This is the lower brain, and this is the brain that evolved first in like reptiles and other simpler organisms. And what happened was after this lower brain was like was developed, another brain grew on top of it, and that brain is called the cerebral cortex. Our, our lower brain kind of is responsible for the automatic functions of like humans and other mammals um, like breathing like flight and fl uh, fight and flight um, regulating hormones just things like that that are, we don't directly control our hind brain, hind brain kind of controls that it also controls some of our like really powerful emotions like you know anger jealousy um, things like that. Now, on top of that layer of the uh, of the brain, there's another layer, and that's called the cerebral cortex. Now, that layer of the brain sits right on top of the hind brain, and it kind of grew out of the hind brain. And the cerebral cortex is really in charge of our higher cognitive functions, uh, things like thinking, uh, processing really complicated solutions to questions, 
uh, interacting with other humans and other individuals and organisms that can think for itself, uh, dealing with social situations, communicating, things like that, that are like higher level cognitive things, it's what our cerebral cortex kind of helps us with. And this is what, what the robot looks like. Um, it's, it's sort of a, quite, quite a complex device, but it, uh, it, it all comes down to a very tiny, tiny point. So just, 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 we want to just like, you see, you see the robot, the robot on the left, and, um, and then the, um, what looks like the needles for insertion next to a penny, but in fact, the, the, the actual needle that gets inserted is way, way tinier. It's that little tiny thing at the, where the arrow is pointing. That's actually the size of the, the needle. It's about 24 microns in diameter. Uh, it, it's so small you can't really even see it with, in the picture with the penny. You can get a sense for the uh, robot doing the electrode insertion. Um, that, that's a very zoomed in view. So they're all very, very tiny, and the robot is very selectively applying them very, de very delicately. Um, and, uh, and then. Let's... Now, this third layer, this artificial neural link that Elon Musk is building, um, is going to really help us do like things that are what our cerebral cortex is not even good at doing. For example, some of the things that our cerebral cortex really sucks at doing is things like memory. So like our, our brain has some memory functions, but it's not as good as a computer. And it's also not good at um, thinking logically uh, in, in situations where our emotions are involved. Um, so this third layer, this neural link, this uh, brain computer interface is really going to help us kind of outsource some of the things that our cerebral cortex couldn't do. So the reason why the cerebral cortex exists in the first place is because the hind brain had some things that it like simply was not able to like process and um, work around. So it delegated this these these problems to our cerebral cortex, and now our cerebral cortex um, has some things that it's not really good at doing. This is what the Chip looks like the operation on a per chip basis. Uh, it, it involves just a a, a two mil, a two millimeter uh, incision, which is dilated to eight millimeters, um, and then the, the, the chip is placed placed through that, and then it, re, it it goes back to being two millimeters, and you can basically glue it shut. Uh, you don't even need a stitch, and and then the the interface to the um, to the to the chip is is wireless, so you have no wires poking out of your head. Very very important. Um, so you, it, it's, it's basically Bluetooth to your phone. Because we'll have to watch the App Store updates for that one. Yeah. Well, for dyslexics, our cerebral cortex is, is, is wired in such a way that we have a hard time reading and focusing on fine, detailed, oriented tasks. Now, this third layer, this neural link, is hopefully going to kind of help dyslexics um, kind of mitigate some of those tasks. I uh, have this uh, aspirationally in, in a human patient um, before the end of next year. So this is not, not far.